this is John from caveofprogramming.com and this is a tutorial on setters or set methods in Java, sometimes known as mutators. And um, we're also going to look at the this keyword a little bit. So I'm in Eclipse and I've got my main program already set up here and I'm going to create a class up here which I'll call frog just to give it a name. And I'll give frog a string name and an int age. And we've seen in previous tutorials how to create um, get methods. So I'm going to give it a get name, which returns the name. And I'm going to give it a get um, age, which returns the age. Like this. And um, you'll notice that I've declared these public. And we've, we've not gone into that explicitly yet. But basically, if you type public in front of your methods, you won't go wrong. Um, so just stick that public keyword in there. And um, I'm going to create a frog object now. So I'll say I'll create a variable called frog1 and I'll set it equal to a new frog. So I've got my frog object. And um, previously what I've been doing is this. I've been saying um, frog1.name equals, let's call him Bertie, and frog1.age equals 1, let's say. And then later on I can access this data using the get method. So I could say frog1.get name like that. And um, if I run that, it's going to say um, Bertie. So um, now the idea is that to try to hide away these um, variables from outside the class. So here we're using the frog class, but we're accessing the variables directly. And that means that if you use this class, you have to know what internal variables it's got. And that's undesirable, um, and it does complicate things um, in more complex situations than this. So what we want is, um, we want, like we've got um, get methods, we want to have set methods that allow you to set that data. And then all you have to know is what methods the frog class has. You don't have to worry about its internal variables. So um, let's create a method here that um, has, it doesn't return anything and it's called set name and it accepts one parameter of type string which I'll call new name and what I'll do with this method is I'll simply set the instance variable name equal to new name and that's a setter that's what a setter is because now instead of saying frog1.name equals Bertie I can say frog1.set name and pass it the value Bertie like that and I've done here the same thing as this um, it's really important though not to confuse these two because of course here I'm setting an instance variable with the equals sign whereas here I'm calling a method. So um, here I'm actually making some code run but it just so happens that what all the code does is to take the parameter that I pass it and assign it to the instance variable name and that's why it's called set name of course. And um, I could also define a set age, so public void set age, int age. And I can say, actually I'll call it new age because otherwise I'll have two ages, new age. Um, I could call it like, um, so age equals new age. These are just arbitrary choices of names. I could call it the age or, you know, um, other age or, you know, other, other name, whatever I like. I just decided to call them new name, new age. And, um, I can use that down here, so I can say frog1, frog1.set age, set it to 1. So now I've avoided referring to the instance variables in my, in another class, you know, in my app class here. And instead I'm just uh, working with frog using its methods, set, its set methods and its get methods, and I could use any other methods that it happened to have. So I've encapsulated the data, so this is called encapsulation because you're hiding away the kind of instance data here. And to enforce that, if you want to stop, because at the moment I could still type that if I wanted to, I can still access the variables directly. But if I just put the keyword private in front of them like this, and you'll see the errors coming up. So now I can no longer access them directly outside of the class, but inside the class it's no problem. And that's what private does. So um, you could always bung private in. Um, in there to enforce encapsulation, to hide these variables away. And uh, one more thing I want to show you here, uh, maybe a couple more things actually. Um, 
Well, um, see here, I've, I've given the parameter a different name to the instance variable because I didn't want to have two names in the same scope. So if I call this name, now bet between these curly brackets, in other words, in this scope, to use the technical language, I've got two names. There's the, I could access this, the instance name, and there's this, the local variable name. And if you just use like name like that, if I just use that without any kind of prefix or anything, it means the one that's declared closest to it basically, which is this one. So local variables or parameters, they, they mask the kind of instance variables if they have the same name. But if I want to actually refer to the instance variable, it's very simple. I just prefix it with this dot. This dot name means this name up here. It means the instance variable, the one that belongs to the, the object or the class, if you like. And um, if I just use name by itself, like here, name by itself means the, the kind of local variable or the argument or parameter is this in this case. So by saying this.name equals name, I'm setting this.name, which is up here, equal to name, which is here. So it's actually pretty simple, really. Um, if you use name by itself, it means the it means this one, and this.name means the instance variable. It's pretty simple. And I could do the same with age here. I could change this to age, and then to disambiguate, um, because you can't, you obviously can't have age equals age. That would just be setting this variable equal to itself. So I need to say this dot age equals age. And if if you wonder what this is, this is um, doesn't really matter at this stage to be honest. But um, what it is is just a, a kind of reference to the object that you're in. So here I've got frog one. This refers to a particular frog, a particular object, and I'm calling methods using frog one. And within the actual object itself, you can use this to refer to the same thing. This refers to the object itself. So it's basically the same as frog1. Or if I had frog2, it would be the same as frog2 um, whenever this ran within the context of the frog2 object. But don't worry about that. The really important thing is to get used to this pattern, because this is a really important pattern for setters, set methods. You, you have like typically public void set something and then a type and then something and then inside the method you say this dot something equals something and just type that out a few times with different parameters and it'll sort of gradually sink in your head and you'll get used to just typing out you know public void set age brackets int age this dot age equals age it just kind of rattles off your tongue and um, you don't have to worry about it now beginners often make the mistake of using this all over the place. Um, and I think even on some university courses they tell you to do that, but it's not necessary. If I had, for example, a public void um, set info, and that took like a name and a uh, age like this, if I wanted to, I mean, I've I've got the option here. I could call. Um, I could, obviously I can work with name and age directly or I could also do set name name and set age age like that so what I want to point out is that here you see um, well actually here I'm accessing the name instance variable directly I don't need this prefix because there's no ambiguity within this scope between these two brackets there's no parameter here Within these two brackets, the only visible variable is this name here, because variables are limited to the brackets that they're declared um, kind of in, or these parameters are limited to the scope of the brackets just after them, the curly brackets here. So between these two, there is only one name, and that's this instance variable here. And the scope of this is these two brackets here, the class ones. So bottom line, um, here you don't need um, any kind of this because there's only one name and it's, it's this one and similarly when you call methods from within other methods so this is a method and I'm calling another method set name you don't need to say this dot um, you can if you want type that but it's completely superfluous you don't need it and um, you only need this pretty much 99% of the time it's only called for 
when you've got ambiguity like that, you've got two variables with the same name and the same scope, and one's an instance variable, and you want to pick out the instance variable. So that's enough for this tutorial, I think, and um, in the next tutorial, we will look at constructors. So join me again for that one, and um, if you're watching on YouTube, do cl click the subscribe button. And you can find this code on caveofprogramming.com, which is all one word. So I'll catch you next time, and until then, happy coding.